Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing work on our Invest Arms Gamer Hawken kit. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below this video or shoot me an email. I prefer the comments though, uh, if anybody has any questions, especially about this particular aspect, because I can answer them publicly and transparently. We're getting to the point now where we're pretty happy where the stock is at, so it's time to start working on our hardware. Now, the way the hardware comes, and if you've, if you've kind of followed my process, uh, you've, you've scratched it up, you've dinged it up, um, but it, I, I suppose if you are careful and remove your hardware before you fit and you do a real gentle fitting to your wood, you may be able to get away with not cleaning up your hardware. Um, if you are really going for a, a quick and easy assembly of this kit. But um, if you're kind of doing it in a more traditional way, this is just the next step in that process. We've pretty well mated our wood to the hardware, and now it's time to clean up the hardware um, by filing and sanding. Most of the hardware that comes on this kit, with the exception of the toe plate, um, because it is just a piece of, of sheet steel, it looks like. It has this matte gray finish that you can see here. Uh, and this is just, I imagine, left over from the casting process. It has a little bit of texture, but not much. Um, it's almost as if you had browned it a little bit, um, but you didn't. So what we're going to do, I've raised up my... Um, my vise here so it's a little more comfortable as I'm sanding. I don't want to be doubled over when I'm doing any sanding like this because I have so much to do. Um, so we have our butt plate, we have our trigger guard, we have our tang, we have our trigger plate to clean up, we have our entry pipe, we also have our toe plate and our barrel tenon wedge plates. Maybe it'll see there Another example of these pins as they come from stock versus how they're cut. So this end here is nice and round, we can see there. This is the end that was actually put into the stock, I believe, because it is not deformed in any way. This end over here was cut and flattened maybe a little bit. And we can see we have a little bit of a burr there. So I'm going to take that burr off, round it out, just like the other side, so we don't risk any, any blowouts when we put this pin back in. When I'm starting a metal cleanup process like this, I like to start large and work small. Um, I'm just a little more comfortable that way. And what I'm going to start with then is the butt plate. And to do that, I have this old 2x6 that we use here in the shop. It's just been cut uh, to kind of match the bevel of a butt plate, as you can kind of see there. Uh, and this is just my butt plate holding block. This just kind of lives here around the vices in the shop. It's got a couple different bevels cut and some space for more. But what I can do with this is just attach my butt plate with a couple, you know, junky zinc hardware store screws, however I need it to be attached, to work on um, the piece that I'm working on. So I'll start up here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You're mainly just going for something that holds this better than um, just using your vice wood. You can see it doesn't perfectly match here. Uh, we'll adjust this as we need to, to to get down here and work on this end. But I just drop this in my vise, and I can drop it in. You know, really just like that, I think, is how we want to do it. And now I can work freely on the top face of my butt plate here. It's nice. This is really chest height on me now. Um, it's a really comfortable place to work, especially when you're sanding and filing like this. As we move forward, um, you know, from this point on, basically, as we finish these metal pieces, we're going to be dealing with a lot of metal shavings and dust. So it may be the kind of thing that you want to get on, um, you know, some kind of mask or make sure you have good ventilation. I have a nice little shaving vacuum box, I call it, uh, with, with a filter on it that will pull shavings away. So you might hear a little bit of a hum, um, but that's just something I do to keep some of these particles out of my lungs. Um, if you have limited experience with this kind of thing, uh, when we have these shavings and things floating around in the air, uh, it might be good for you to have safety glasses on as well. So I'll just take this nice kind of fine, you know, medium fineness flat file here and start working this top face, removing, uh, you know, that kind of mottled gray finish. You can see here we have some ups and downs, you know, uh, that's just kind of casting imperfection to my knowledge. And we'll go through and, and we're just going to work this until we get a nice even surface all the way across here. 
and around both sides. So you can see here, I'm a little off center in my block, but this allows me to clean up this left hand side first, and then we'll move the plate over and we can hit the other side here. This just um, being a thin plate on a little bit of a thicker block, not a big deal at all. Keeping all the same filing principles that we've worked with so far, you know, trying to keep two hands on the file, working diagonally. All those principles we looked at in wood shaping apply here as well. So don't forget them. And I know it looks like I'm removing a lot of material and it, you know, may be thinking at home that uh, what do you do when this doesn't match up with the wood? Ideally here, we're not removing enough to really make much of a difference. If we find that when we put all this stuff back on the wood, um, that there is a little bit of a difference, that's where we can come in with our file back sandpaper and we can clean that up. The goal here isn't to remove material that affects the fit, it's only to clean up the finish. There you can see a little bit of that difference. Here's what we've worked. I need to clean up this edge here a little bit. Um, there's how it was, and there's how it is. We're gonna do this all the way around, all the way around every exposed face of our trigger guard. We don't need to come in here. Uh, everything fits fine enough. If you had a kit or parts that weren't fitting, you could remove material out of the inside of your plate. Uh, but really, we're only after cosmetic here now. Um, kind of into the second half really of the kit. So I'll go through with that file and, and, and get the whole plate to this kind of finish. I don't want to get the top to a f total finish and then start working everywhere else. I wanna get one pass, one even pass all the way around the plate, especially these edges here. We don't wanna leave these undone. That's a big no-no. Uh, we'll get everything this kind of sparkly silver finish and then I'm going to come in with an even finer pretty worn out file here and uh, and we'll clean it up you'll be impressed I think at how good of a finish you can get with just a really fine worn out file but then for the final look we'll come in here with uh, with some sandpaper and really clean it up <laughs> Now that I'm going to be working the actual butt plate surface of this butt plate, I'm shifting my screw to coincide with that work surface. That way I have tension on the area that I'm working and it's not bouncing around. Now because my mounting block here isn't perfect, I want to make sure that I'm not compressing any of that plate at all. I don't want to risk um, kinking it or, or maybe even cracking it depending on the quality of your plate. I haven't bent or kinked this any, but I do have you know, I'm not touching all the way through here. So there's my mounting screw pretty loose as I'm working it, and that's what we don't want. I can tighten this up. I'm kind of jostling it there a little bit. Still kind of loose. It's getting kind of solid there. I'd say that's a nice solid working uh, space there. But if I over torque this, you'll see that starting to compress. And that's what we don't want because we have a nice fit to our wood. We don't want to mess that up. So we're just going to go with just lightly tight so that our file isn't, you know, stopping and, and rolling um, the part as we're working it. I'm grabbing this little half round file here because it's not as worn out as the other one I was using up here to kind of clean things up, but it's also not um, so aggressive that it's going to leave me a bunch of marks to clean up. to I can come in here with some file back sandpaper um, just like I've been doing and uh, and get a little more oomph maybe out of my piece or out of my strokes sometimes on these castings you may want a little more aggression without worrying about um, having to go in and clean up file marks But 
but that's what will happen <laughs> to your sandpaper there. You can see a little bit here and a bit down these sides. I've got some weird lines going there from my filing. So I'm going to shift my my focus and my process here a little bit to make sure that we're not uh, leaving those in there and maybe causing ourselves trouble down the road. On a large part like a butt plate, it's easy to see those um, those variations, and I think that's where being good at filing really starts to, uh, or, or really filing just starts to become a skill. You can hide a lot on some of the smaller parts that are out there. Uh, not so much a plate like this. show you another example here you can see I've got kind of a facet forming there not too concerned about it because our butt plate bevels like this but I'm going to consciously now focus on matching out the left side of our plate here so that bevel really matches and we even up this surface we don't want that line to be in there in our final piece if we can keep from it so I'm just going to blend that in a bit with my file. No big deal. And that's really something to watch for, I think, as you're working with a half round, because you can start to get in those in those patterns and those paths that you may not necessarily want to get in and create those facets. So you can see there it's already starting to to blend out a bit. I'm tipping the butt plate away from me so I can get in uh, really up in here and then I'll shift the butt plate over um, to be able to reach over here with my file. Maybe I can switch over to this guy. Maybe get most of that in one shot it looks like. There you can see some more of those lines in that, I, I believe from the, from the casting process perhaps, that we're, we're starting to reveal. Don't worry about those, just keep working your file in there. As long as you're not getting too thin, it, it's really hard to, to take away too much on this. And I think having a clean part is more important uh, when you're doing something like this, depending on the quality that you want. And you could probably call this, you know, good enough if you wanted, but your finish won't be even. And if you want an even finish, you need an even casting. So you can see here I've got a couple divots in there from the casting. It's hard to see those with that as the casting comes at times, but it really reveals itself as, it, as you work. So I'm just going to come in there with that half round. Keep working that area.
I've got some irregularities over here where I was trying to work those spots out. Um, just a couple little bumps that I don't want to really persist as I kind of compare it to the other side here. So I'm going to get out my wider half round file here uh, just to make sure that I'm getting a nice broad cut across this surface and not um, riding those, uh, those bumps with my file. So this file is a little more aggressive and it's hopefully just going to kind of cut through those bumps. Clean that up for me. That's what it did. Exactly as we wanted. It's easy to uh, get in the mindset if you, you know, you've bought your kit, any kit, and you treat it with extreme care because you've worked hard for your money and this is how you've chosen to spend it. And it's, it can be nerve wracking putting something like this together, but it's important to remember that, you know, sometimes you gotta get a bigger tool. You don't wanna force anything. You don't wanna break anything. But sometimes it's good just to get that bigger tool out because oftentimes it can be the right tool for what you're doing. So here I'm just gonna shift that butt plate over so I can clean up this other side. And I could just sand down this block if I wanted to, but this is kind of an all periods butt plate block. So some of the wider earlier plates need a the full two by width that this is. Casting line I'm calling it there, so I'm gonna get out my wider file. We're just gonna hit this entire area. So I've got the real contrast of that line out now. And I'm gonna switch over to my finer half round and just kind of blend that area in to the rest of the plate. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna work right here. You can see there we've got that little bump, which is, I think looking at it, kind of our last, um, you know, real casting, I don't know, deformity. <laughs> it's not really a deformity, uh, a divot, we'll just call it. It's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. It's just gonna take a little work to, to get it out. So when I'm doing this, where we have, uh, you can see these two different colors because the light is refracting at two different angles. So we have kind of a, a light gray or a, a medium gray here and a light gray over here where we have a facet that's kind of rolled over the side of our plate. And what I'm doing with my file is I'm trying to ride right on that line in between those two faces. And I'm just blending those together. So by taking material off of that peak, if you imagine my fingers are that peak, exaggerated, as I file and apply pressure to that peak, it's going to gradually come down and we'll have an even surface across. And so that's what we're doing. Wrong file. You may do it differently. You probably see a lot of other folks do it differently. There we go. You see that kind of coming together. A little bit of that line still over here. We're going to come through and clean up the outer sides of the plate anyway. So we see kind of some variation there. I'm not too worried about that. We're gonna clean that up. What I am focusing on now, kind of around this screw, the screw is a very complex area because we have a curve going this way and we have a curve going this way. And what you'll find, and, or what I find when I'm building and um, you know working on butt plates like this, is I'll have an area, this happened on my Kibler and it happened on my Traditions as well. Um, back here, kind of underneath that screw as the, as the butt plate lays, you'll have some more of those color differences there. And you just want to make sure you're going through and, and cleaning those out. It's just a little extra step to improve the, the final look and the final fit and finish. So I'm allowing my file to run with the curve as the butt plate goes across. We'll call that the, that's the is that the X axis? The y-axis, if you're into 3D stuff. But I'm just allowing my file to balance across those curves so I can take that spot away evenly.
Then over here on our left hand side we have a similar spot kind of formed. We don't have to worry about going across the entirety of the butt plate. But we want to make sure that we're not just working right here because that will give us a divot in there. So what I try to do is with my file see where that spot is and then back my tool up so that I know I'm not creating any more problems. The handy thing I can do in this vise too is I can swing that around and come in from this direction as well. Maybe switch to our more aggressive guy here to make sure that we're really flattening that out. And sometimes that's all you need. Working it from that angle just wasn't working for me. If I switch it around like that, it really cleaned up pretty fast. I'll come in here real quick. Have a little bit of line still here, a little bit of a divot there. I know this can kind of seem uh, slow and laborious and maybe boring for, for some folks out there and I don't knock you for that. It's, it's pretty repetitive. But I like to find uh, a lot of peace in it. There's something nice about taking a rough, and this really wasn't even really a super rough casting at all. But taking a casting and getting it all nice and clean. It's about as close to like carving marble as I think I'll ever get. <laughs> you know, as far as making something nice and clean out of something a little rough. If you're interested in this process. I encourage you to check out some of the other builders out there. Um, I think it's Chris Hirsch down in Texas is working on creating a great new series of castings crossing a ton of different periods uh, of muzzle loading, uh, both in, I believe, locks and lock plates as well as butt plates, trigger guards and things. I'll put his website on the screen now so you can check it out. So now I'm just going over some of these areas a little bit. Uh, I notice I have a bit of a ring formed around my uh, screw hole here and I'm just checking the proportions of everything seeing if I have any more of those lines or any casting marks that I want to get rid of. The way I look at it using a couple of those fine files for this step especially at the stage that this plate was at we really have a nice surface to work with. We can jump into using our sandpaper uh, and maybe a light uh, buffing wheel then to get a nice finish on here but we, we're, we've got a nice matte gray even finish here from our files that I this is what I like to get. So I'm going to work this screw hole just a little bit more you don't have to I don't know if you can even see it on the film just a little more work on that So I'm going to switch it around so that balances out much better for me. I had kind of a raised face around, uh, around that screw hole and now we've got it a bit more even with our butt plate. Okay, so now we have these edges here of our butt plate and uh, we can get these with our file. Some folks, you know, will just put this back on the stock. And, and work that edge so they have a nice mate to their wood stock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up with a file here and then uh, once we get closer to our our final fit and finish we'll put it back on the stock and sand it there uh, to make sure that we have a nice 
even joint. We don't have too much variation. So we're gonna change up what we're doing here a little bit. Here I've put a heavy piece of leather in my vise. Uh, I don't really need to grip this very hard for this step of the process. And I'm just using that leather to prevent any you know, unwanted dings or marks on my guard. And I'm just using it to kind of support this butt plate. As I come in here, I wanna clean up this side face even back into here, uh, depending on how well your filing has gone for you. Uh, so I'm just coming in with Again, a fine half round like this, just a small file. And I'm lining up on this side face here and I'm stroking out to the end. I'll do a few strokes like that and then I'll come in from the bottom and do the same thing. Kind of indexing myself on the established face and then bringing that stroke up. That way we work on getting a nice blend between this face and this face. Now, these are really small. I mean, this is like an eighth of an inch thick here. Um, so this, you know, depending on what you're trying to do with your kit, you know, you don't need to necessarily be so conscious of, of the faces here. Um, but I like to be. So I'm just showing you how we do that. And I don't need it to be perfect. Like, and I kind of tilt it in the light there, you can kind of see. That's good enough for me. The line here that you see, we're gonna buff out with our sandpaper anyway. Not worried about that. So I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna change my grip here. And just go down our line. Again, because we have this mated to our stock, we don't want this to get all wibbly wobbly. So do your best. to index with the face and stay with it. When I say index, I mean I'm getting flat with that face and I'm staying with it as I'm going down. I'm not letting my file go like this as I'm going down. I know it doesn't look very secure here in my hand, but Sometimes simple is uh, is what works. Got a little bit of an area back in here we're gonna take care of. That doesn't look too bad for me. So, and this isn't the final fit and finish. We are gonna sand on this, so. You know, if it's not perfect, don't sweat it, but it does help, I think, the sanding process. But it does help the sanding process if you have an even finish from your file work. You can see up here we've nicked that a little bit as we worked our, our butt face. So let's clean that up just by hand here. I see some folks argue online that you can leave file marks and things in and it emulates, you know, they're trying to make it look worn and torn. The problem with that for me, maybe we've talked about it before in the series, is that a file is very mechanical. You know, all these are even lines. It cuts evenly. And so when you have perfect file crisscrosses in there, it doesn't really read as natural wear and tear. Um, a lot of times it just reads as sloppy workmanship, depending on what you're wanting to do. If that's, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I think if you're wanting to kind of do the, the new old, you know, creating a rifle that looks worn out, it's much better to go into some more uh, unpredictable means of wear. Some people say chains. People get gunk off their tractor. I've got a, a little cardboard box of rusty nails and rusty chains and uh, I'll toss things in there and leave it in the back of my car as I drive around for a couple weeks. Let it get dinged up and scratched up. Um, there's all sorts of things and I'm sure a lot of the other more capable craftspeople out there can inform you on how they do it. But don't, you know, sometimes for a lot of people 
that's a that's a method that they've worked on for a long time and they may not be willing to share it you know don't don't get upset if that's the case it's good to go out and learn and sometimes figure it out yourself we don't want to leave out this bottom face here on our plate If we leave that as it came, I mean, it was ground a little bit, but we're still gonna, it's still gonna be different than our filing. Again, because this lines up with our toe plate, we wanna make sure that we've got it a nice even face on here. So that I'm gonna call the filing on our butt plate. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like me to address, you know, please feel free to leave them in the in the comments section for the video or shoot me an email at ilovemuzzleting at gmail.com. The comments section is a little bit easier and I find it's a little more educational for uh, other folks that chime in. Uh, somebody else might have the same question that you have and I find it helps to publicly answer a lot of these questions to help out other people uh, so they don't necessarily have to take the time out of their day. So uh, again, you know, feel free to tell me if I was doing something wrong or, or if you have a different idea on how to do something. More than happy to hear those and, and apply it to some of the future videos. So once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.